Okay, so I want to return to where, we, to where we were here. So that's the idea of sensory substitution for the deaf that we're pursuing. And this sort of idea about expanding the human umwelt is something that's happening all over the planet. So, so there are now probably over a thousand people who have implanted mag little uh, neodymium magnets into their, um, into their fingers. And this is a very easy thing. Biohackers do this um, you know, on, on themselves. You just implant a little magnet into your fingers. And then what you can do is you can have a magnetic sense. So people who do this, because it's up, the little magnet's up against your nerves in your finger, they can, for example, uh, around the transformer for your computer, you can touch it. You can feel the power bubble. You can feel the electromagnetic radiation. The, the bubble uh, has a, a shape to it, a size to it. Um, they have what people who have this describe it like a color because with different frequencies, these bubbles feel, feel differently. These little electromagnetic bubbles around things. Um, and so people who have this can, can diagnose electrical problems in their computer system uh, without getting out their voltameter, right? Because let's say you've got a, a, a cable that's dead somewhere. All you have to do is feel for it. You say, okay, that cable's live and so on. Oh, that one's dead. Because you're feeling it. It's expanding the human umwelt. Um, and there are so many examples of this now. The, the, the guy on the left here is somebody named Neil Harbison. And he was born colorblind, so he came up with something called the iBorg. And it's, um, it's a little color camera mounted near his forehead. And it translates uh, different colors in the visual field into different uh, frequencies, into different sounds. And so he's developed his own little mapping from colors to sounds. And he hears the colors in the world and claims that he now has color vision. I mean, you know, he looks at things with the eyeboard camera and says, oh, there's red, there's green. Now he's painting in color with it. He's given himself color vision. Uh, the, the woman on the right happens to be his girlfriend, and she's into the cyborg movement also. And so she's planted in this picture, she's implanted motion detectors in her ears, and she feels the crowds moving past her um, and, you know, gets this sense of the motion uh, of the crowds around her. And, and for both of them, what they're doing is they're using technology to expand the human umwelt. And, uh, you know, I think there's really no end to envisioning the expansions <laughs> that you could do, such as 360 degree vision or seeing in, in infrared or ultraviolet range and, and additions such as whole new perceptions of the type that, that I've been describing. Um, so I want to quickly tell you about a couple, uh, uh, one more example of this that we're doing in my lab right now, which is, so imagine that you're taking information that's happening inside the brain that you have to use sophisticated machinery to measure, and, and, you, and you actually feed that information back into the eyeball. So in other words, you're, taking, you're, you're, you're giving visual input based on brain activity. So this is an experiment in my lab that's already well underway. So here's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're trying to help cocaine addicts who are addicted and trying to quit. Uh, we're trying to help them quit by doing the following thing. We measure in the scanner the activity in networks in their brain that are involved in craving cocaine and those networks that are involved in suppressing that craving. And what we do is we have them in the scanner and we show them pictures of cocaine or cocaine paraphernalia and they have a speedometer on the screen and that speedometer represents what's going on in these particular networks in their brain. And so as they're changing the activity in very particular ways in their brain, they're getting visual feedback. In other words, it's feeding back into them and they get to, they get to manipulate their own brain activity that way. And we're just, you know, we've been working on this for a while, but we're really just still at the foot of the mountain here on this. But this, I think, has the, in my opinion right now, has the highest hope of really solving the drug rehabilitation problem of anything out there. Um, you know, there are pharmaceutical approaches and so on, but this is really the way that we might be able to nail this problem. And um, <clears throat> so... Um, What's cool about it is it's totally participatory. It only works if you, if you want to suppress your craving. But what it offers is the legal system an alternative to incarceration. So, you know, the prison population has quadrupled since 1980, mostly due to uh, drug crimes. And this gives a way to run a legal system much more efficiently and humanely by having people be able to use technology to control their own cravings in a participatory manner.